Hi everyone, Stephen Van Tassel here, Wildlife Control Consultant, bringing you another episode of Living the Wildlife Podcast as part of the Pesquite Podcast family. So welcome aboard, I'm glad to have you here with me. What's today's topic? Well, today's topic is I wanted to talk about ticks and opossums. I had a subscriber uh, reach out to me, or at least he, I think he's a subscriber, he contacted me on Facebook and said, uh, Stephen, will you discuss this ticks and possums thing and I thought oh that kind of an interesting idea so I did a little bit of research and trying to get down to it because we're going to get geeky here in the Pest Geek podcast so um, as you know you've probably seen this all over Facebook from time to time you have you know probably called them the opossum mafia uh, where they just simply are touting all things beautiful wonderful possum now I've done a previous podcast sort of debunking the idea that possums don't carry rabies well that's not true as you know and I'm going to refer you back to my previous podcast on that it's going to be in the archives or you can google it on YouTube so uh, we do know that possums can carry uh, rabies and have had tested positive for rabies but it's just very hard for possums to contract rabies likely due to their low body temperature well what about what about ticks are possums going to be the solution to tick-borne illnesses if we allow them to just simply scurry the countryside and are we as wildlife control operators increasing the tick load in the environment if we're killing possums for clients and that sort of thing so uh, it's a complicated question it's an emotional question so let's start off straight away uh, with this particular issue first uh, you have two different groups of people out there, the possum lovers and the possum haters. Um, I'm in the possum lover camps. I think they're a really neat creature. I just have a, I have a warm spot for possums, okay? But I've killed, killed some to be sure, but there's, uh, I like, I like possums. I think they're kind of a neat, I call them a four-wheel drive garbage can because they basically almost anything. They are an amazing creature. Um, they've only come to the northern tier of the United States. They, it's believed after the Civil War, the one theory is that they were hopping on trains that were coming back and forth. But in any event, but there's obviously a number of people that are just really gaga over possums. And they're trying to sort of rehabilitate this animal. And so you can see my, my screen here where... You know, people are trying to tell how wonderful possums are. Look at these beautiful photos here. I just did a Google search on possums and ticks in Missouri, for instance. And, you know, that's really cute. You have a mom possum there with, with her young, right? A female with young. So that's pretty that's pretty neat. And, you know, they're, they're kind of ugly enough to be cute, as you might know. So this issue of how many ticks do they eat... Uh, is would be an important one because as you all would know is that ticks are a significant problem because they're a, they vector Lyme disease there's some uh, other diseases that they would carry as well but Lyme would probably be the one that really captures the most attention so where did this idea about ticks and possums come about well let me show you I'm going to pull up the article here and pull this over to my new screen. All right, so bring this up for you. All right, so here we go. This is the name of the article, just so that you have it, so you don't think I'm just speaking uh, just from my own uh, knowledge here. No, I'm speaking on my, my knowledge is based on this as well as uh, some other information. So this is the article, and let me read it for those who are listening. It's by F. Keesing, J. Bruner, S. Dewar, M. Kilea, K. Loguidis, K. Schmidt, H. Vuong, and R. S. Ostfeld. It's a multi-author. That's one of the things you have with scientific literature. You often have many, many authors. And the title of the article is Hosts as Ecological Traps for the Vector of Lyme Disease. And it was published in the Proceedings of the Royal Society, and that was in 2009, volume 276, pages 3, 9, 11, 
through 3919. So let's go over that title one more time for those of you are trying to write it down. Hosts as Ecological Traps for the Vector of Lyme Disease, published by the Proceedings of the Royal Society, 2009, that's when the year it was published, volume 276, pages 3911 through 3919. So, uh, got a copy of this particular article. I think you can Google it yourself. I think they've made it uh, past the firewall there. Um, not sure, because I have access to uh, materials through through various means beyond firewall, so I have access to things that most of the public would not generally have. Not that it's secret, it's just you have to pay a fee uh, to get into some of these journal articles. So let me kind of summarize what this researchers did, and that is what they did was they wanted to investigate the deer tick, and so they got a bunch of uh, larvae of the deer tick by basically growing it themselves. I mean, they took they took some animals that had deer ticks on them and then basically had them feed and ultimately raise all of these uh, larvae of ticks that they could then use in their study. Then they went out into the northern woods of New York and captured some animals. And let me give you a list of what the animals were that they captured. Let me go down here, get to that particular section. So they went out and they looked at a mouse, a veery, which I believe is a bird, a cat bird, a chipmunk, a squirrel, and a possum. And so they have, you know, whatever their sample size was for those animals. And what they did was they took these animals and they put them inside of cages and then you know had them acclimate a little bit and then ultimately they would take a hundred larvae and then they would place them on these animals and then restrain the animals for four hours to give the larvae time to attach and begin feeding on these animals and then they would release the animals from restraint to see how well the animals groomed off the ticks. So that's kind of the research in a nutshell. Of course, there's a lot, little bit more detail there, but that's kind of the, it in a nutshell. And so there I, there, what they were looking at was how do, the, do these larvae, are they able to stay on long enough to attach? Now let's understand a little bit about tick biology, okay? So, when we're dealing with hard, when we're dealing with hard ticks, hard back ticks like the deer tick, and I think I have the scientific name of the little bugger here, if I can uh, find it here. The black, the black-legged tick. Oh, let me see if I can find it. Yes, here it is. Ixodes scapularis. Okay, Ixodes scapularis. It is the species involved in spreading Lyme disease. Now, the only, it's not that the tick has the disease in it. The tick has to be infected with the disease. And it inf gets infected with the disease from its host. And when the tick starts from an egg, so the eggs, the female is uh, gets a blood meal. She's fertilized. She has deposits eggs, the eggs mature, and they go into different larval stages. I think the, I think there's three or four larval stages that the tick must go through before it reaches maturity. And each phase of the cycle, the tick must get a blood meal. So what is it feeding on? And so one of the th animals it's feeding on, of course, is deer mice. And so it's believed that the deer, these ticks are getting infected from either a deer mouse, a chipmunk, and I believe the third animal was, let me just do a quick search here. To find it, where it's getting infected from. Nope, it didn't, it didn't come up. Let me say the uh, lime hosts. That word didn't come up. But it's certainly those two, chipmunks and deer mice. So the larvae only becomes infected when it gets a blood meal from an infected host. And then when it feeds the next time, 
that's when it can help transmit that disease to the next host. Okay, so a, a larvae in its first instar won't be infected until it feeds on something that is infected. All right, so. What they did was is they took these animals again and they restrained them for four hours first after they placed a hundred ticks on them and then they basically allowed the animals to take time to see how well they groomed to eliminate those ticks. And basically once, uh, once there was enough time passed then they would go back in and then see how many of those ticks fed on the animals, how many were removed, how many fell off the animals, because sometimes the ticks would just fall off for whatever reason. And, uh, and, any, and, and any tick that they did not find, they assumed was either was eaten in ticks that were sort of destroyed, that would be from the grooming process, and how many were left. And then they quantified that. So they basically had a ratio of how well certain animals groom themselves versus others. Okay. That's Again, this basically, uh, you know, 10 page paper or so, uh, it's basically how that research went along. And so let's take a look at some numbers here that I just want to show you here in the screen. The shorter the column, the better, the fewer ticks that remained on the animal. So you can see the mouse. Well, the mouse, the ticks were all able to sort of, most of the ticks were able to hang on and get a feeding, right? So obviously mice, that makes sense. Deer mice are a significant problem. And then we have a bird and they, through these other groups, the, the letter Bs show that these, these species are similar in terms of how well they remove ticks. A was the worst, that was the deer mouse, but possum was the best. So what the researchers found was of the hundred ticks that were placed on the possum, somewhere in the vicinity of 97% of the ticks were removed from the possum. So then they theorized, is it possible that if the, if we're, if our possums able to sort of act as what's called a ecological trap. Are possums, as they're moving through the woods, are they acting as an ecological trap for ticks? And what that is is just basically a very fancy scientific term that the ticks become a tr you know attached to the possum and then ultimately get removed so they so that only three percent are able to be successful well that's you know if you had if i told a client i had a a pesticide that was 97 percent successful on an insect that's pretty impressive all right we may focus on that three percent but that's pretty impressive and so the idea is if possums are able if we're able to just move a bunch of possums through the area and they are the, and they're going to remove 97 percent of the possums that 97 percent of the ticks that get on them that's pretty impressive now whether that has significant environmental impact that's the million dollar question right so part of the the mythology you may be seeing on facebook is if you're thinking that possums are out hunting ticks in the environment that's not true okay that's not what possums are doing they're not spending their time looking at blades of grass trying to snatch the tick questing okay if you if you're familiar with questing you're not familiar with questing go look it up so when a tick goes to the end of a branch or something and then shoots out its legs, you know, extends its legs, hoping that as an animal walks by, it's able to grab on and then finds its host that way. It's called questing. And so that's what happens when they get onto a possum. Possums scurrying through, you know, various grasses and tick infested areas. And the tick says, hey, warm body, there's, grabs on and then tries to get a host and tries to get a feeding. And unfortunately for the tick, Fortunately for us, 97% of the ticks that get on the possum get removed because, you know, it's during its grooming process. Okay, that's pretty cool. So, but that is different from suggesting that possums are out hunting ticks. 
Okay, it's simply not true. So a possum is only killing a tick indirectly in the sense, hunting ticks indirectly as part of the grooming process. It's like, hey, what's this thing on me? I'm getting this thing off my body. Okay, whether that had, the bigger question of whether the possum is, is sig killing of ticks as in their grooming process is significant enough to have an environmental impact that's a separate question that has yet to be asked. What the researchers did note, let me get back up to the head of this particular page again. What the researchers did note was that when you removed chipmunks from the environment, when those numbers dropped, the ticks tended to infest deer mice even more effectively even more aggressively, which makes sense because the ticks are desperately looking for something to, to get a blood meal on. If they don't get a blood meal, they're ultimately gonna perish, right? So they, in order for them to pass through the various stages of their development, they've gotta get a blood meal. So removing chipmunks, because chipmunks are a significant source for their blood needs as well. So removing chipmunks actually forces the the deer, the ticks to go to deer mice. Now with deer mice, deer mice are the primary vector of Lyme disease. They're that host of Lyme disease that allows the ticks to become infected. And the problem with deer mice is they're everywhere. They're ubiquitous. They're found in all types of environments. So the question becomes, uh, if you're really looking to control ticks, are you going to focus your attention on possums or are you going to focus your attention on deer mice? Well, the answer should be obvious. You're going to focus your attention on deer mice. Do possums help? Yes, but do they meet the criterion of a true ecological trap? Um, yeah, let me give you that what that definition is. Again, an ecological trap is, and this is quite technical, so i got to read it for you, okay? So it says the an ecological trap is an area an organism occupies by preference, but that actually decreases its ability to live compared to another place. Now the place in this instance is, do ticks live better on an opossum versus some other animal? Well, that's obviously not, that's obviously not true. They don't live better on possums because they're more likely to get eaten, okay? So if a tick has a choice, between living on a deer mouse and a possum, it should pick the deer mouse, right? But that's not always what happens, right? So the ticks that fall onto an opossum are more likely to get killed, so that, that's like a trap, right? You don't wanna be in a trap if you're trying to survive. You don't wanna go on a trap, you wanna go on something better, right? So why are these ticks getting picked up by possums? Well, ticks are stupid, so they're not, they can't think it out. So they basically grab along and then most of them get killed. The three criterion for something to constitute a ecological trap are they, the organism must prefer the habitat. It must have fitness, lower fit, the, the fitness in that habitat must vary compared to other habitats. And the organism must have a lower fitness in that habitat. So in other words, the ticks must prefer the possum, which clearly they go after them, so that's probably going to fit. The fitness, the fitness is just determined with how well does the animal survive. Okay, that's basically what fitness means, means there. How well do ticks survive? Well, do ticks survive differently in different environments? Well, yeah, they, they survive better on a deer mouse and less on a possum, so that fits. And then the organism must have less success on the possum than in other habitats. That would make the possum an ecological trap. So there you go. Is the possum an ecological trap? Yeah, it is an ecological trap. The next question is, and this was something brought up by Snopes. I don't wanna, I mean, I'm not a big fan of Snopes for other reasons, but they're certainly correct in this. The question ultimately is, is do our ticks do possums impact Lyme disease on an environmental scale 
are, is it significant enough to make a difference? That's unknown. And this research doesn't answer that question. It's not a fault of the researchers. I'm not here bashing the researchers here. What, what they did was great. Glad to have it. But sometimes while people took this research and maybe spun it a little bit beyond what it should have, what sh it should have been. And if you're looking for a really good article to kind of summarize some of this up for you, I found one and I want to give a shout out to it here because I, I'm certainly going to encourage it. And it's from the Fur Bearer Conservation Group. And they have uh, an article on the possum benefits, beliefs, myths, and misconceptions. So if you go to the furbearerconservation.com and then just do a search there for the opossum, do the search the opossum colon benefits, beliefs, myths, and misconceptions, you will see if you scroll down, there'll be a link that says impacts on Lyme disease. So we're scrolling there and then it will talk about how this particular study and they will evaluate it and they would say, look, um, it's possible that the possum removes 5,000 ticks per season and they continue on and they note that the possum really isn't gonna be necessarily something that's eliminating ticks from the habitat. So the possum is only good at eliminating ticks from its own body. Whether it's eliminating ticks from the environment in any meaningful way is, is dubious. It's sort of like the difference between, do you think that I'm, I'm a mosquito, I'm a mosquito magnet. I mean, mosquitoes love me, okay? Just because I slap and kill a mosquito on my body doesn't mean I'm really contributing to the management of mosquitoes in my area. See the difference? So yeah, have I, have I removed a mosquito from the habitat? Yes, I have. Does it really, is it noticeable to my neighbor who's also slapping one? <laughs> and the answer is no, right? I, if I was, I'd have to be killing tens of thousands of them probably to make a noticeable difference okay that's the same thing with an opossum so the, is an opossum helpful well sure anytime a possum or any animal kills a tick it helps but is it significant enough to make a meaningful difference so that it's safer for you to walk into the woods without taking precautions and the answer is probably Probably not, right? So maybe additional research will come in that'll prove that it does, but we'll wait. We'll wait and see. But right now, um, I'll just read this little paragraph for you. It says the notion that opossums actively consume ticks found on their body has been grossly overstated to suggest that the animal is an integral component of the control of Lyme disease a statement that has yet to be proven in any capacity. I think that sentence basically says it all, and that came from the furbearerconservation.com, and I think that's a very reasonable concept. So how do we summarize this up a little bit for you? Because we've gotten a little geeky on you here, and I know this may get your eyes may glaze over a little bit. So understand that we have a group of people out there that love possums and are trying to get other people to love them too. Just like what you saw with bats, you know, bats allegedly the great mosquito controllers of the universe, people sometimes in their desire to rehabilitate an animal that's despised overstate the benefits to try to get people to stop hating them. I think that may have been what happened with the possums here, where people have said, yo, possums never get rabies, possums kill all the Lyme disease ticks, possums are wonderful and the savior of mankind, right? And you're like, okay, well, they've sort of overstated it. So let's kind of summarize it a little bit because we as professionals need to have a, a rational, grounded understanding of wildlife. If you hate animals, you're in the wrong business, right? So let's be blunt about this. If you're... It, you know, if, if you just like killing stuff and you just, and you just somehow that makes your day, there's something wrong with you. You need help. Okay. Do we kill animals? Yes. 
are we do do is our motivation every day to see how many how many body counts we can get? If that's your motivation as a wildlife control operator, there's a problem. You have a problem, and you need to get that addressed. Because our problem is not our desire is not to see how many animals we kill. Our desire is to see how we can resolve conflicts between animals and people. And sometimes that requires an animal to be killed. And other times it means maybe we need to shut the barn door to keep the animal out of the out of the building. So one of the analogies I give when I do do training, as I said, of a farmer is losing um, corn to deer, and the, and the farmer says, "We got too many deer." And my question to that is, is that really true? Is that really the problem? The problem is the problem too many deer. Or is the problem that the deer are eating is corn? Well, if you think about it, the problem is the deer is eating the corn. If you can stop the deer eating the corn, it doesn't matter how many deer there are. There may be other problems with too many deer, but whether you have a billion deer or five deer, if you stop the feeding on the corn, is the farmer's problem solved, right? So that's the issue. So we're not into the just killing stuff. So in that sense, if you just, you know, hate possums. I, I met a trapper once who just, um, he hated trap, hated possums. I get it. There's no value, value to their fur, and they got into his traps, and it just caused him to, I mean, he just went ballistic. It was, it was amazing. We as wildlife control operators, yeah, we can be upset and we may be killing possums for various reasons, but it shouldn't be, we, we should not have a vendetta against particular particular animals. And I would just hold, a, as a side note, an invasive species would be different because that doesn't belong in the environment. So we want to have a balanced view. So when we have clients who hate possums and we have clients that love possums, we should be that middle balancing act. Okay. Because if you're a deer owner, possums are deadly, could be deadly to your horses because of the parasite that they can kill. Equine, oh, equine myelencephalitis, okay, EM, EMC, EMC, I believe it is. So um, you want to make sure that we have a balanced view. So we don't need to overstate how great possums are, nor do we need to demonize possums as the the great Satan so we need to have a balanced view here so I think what's happened is is that people have sort of looked at possums as these these possum advocates and they've overstated what possums are going to do when it comes to ticks do possums eat and kill ticks yes but the ticks on their body not out in the landscape so basically, it's like they're walking through, a tick gets onto them, they remove that tick. They are not actively hunting ticks to remove them. So in that sense, possums are not necessarily, and if I doubt it's ever going to be demonstrated this way, that possums are sort of a, a, an environmental sink for ticks to be removed from the environment. I doubt it will ever be shown to be good enough for that. I hope that has been helpful for you in terms of understanding that a lot of these rumors and things that get set out, there's often a kernel of truth in there and often things just kind of get bent a little bit. So they're spun a little bit. Let me just, I'll put it a little bit more positively. There's a little bit of a spin put onto it that just doesn't put con the right context on it. So possums are incredibly, uh, detailed in terms of how they're getting these getting these nymphs these larvae off of their uh opossum nymphs excuse me tick nymphs off of their body they're really good at doing that but unfortunately uh it's not going to be probably enough for us to walk through the woods and not worry about and not worry about ticks right so if you want to do that you need to control the deer mice, and I would also probably suggest, the research suggests that control the, the deer and also um, doing different things with our, with our habitat and environment, which is going to be very hard because the Northeast is heavily populated and urbanized, <coughs> urbanized at this point. So the deer mice and the deer, those two are the, the, the pinch points for ticks to really control uh, 
control them on the landscape and I doubt politically the public will accept the solutions there so are possums wonderful yeah I think possums are really cool are they going to eliminate ticks off your environment um, no they just eliminate them off their body and they at a rate about 97 percent so it's it's pretty impressive chipmunks and deer mice however are around and they're feeding all the a lot of the ticks so definitely consider that as well check out the article if you want uh, certainly let's give give some kudos back to that particular article again as I pull it up just to give it another shout out here again keesing k-e-e-s-i-n-g 2009 host says ecological traps for the vector of Lyme disease published by the proceedings of the Royal Society this will article generated a firestorm but it's been kind of a little misunderstood in terms of how much it went you as pest geek professionals living the wildlife make sure you don't get caught up in that and help educate your clients about the, the fuller story of this so I'm Stephen Van Tassel wildlife control consultant hey take a little time subscribe to the channel make sure you send me an email tell me what you think ideas for future shows I would love to hear from you we don't have any sponsors for this particular show other than myself. Do check out my books at wildlifecontrolconsultant.com. Uh, and if you have something you want to send me, it's wildlifecontrolconsultant at gmail.com, wildlifecontrolconsultant at gmail.com. And remember, we want you to live the wildlife, not be the wildlife. Take care.